Hey everyone, today I've got three very cool things to show you. First, we're gonna have a little bit of fun. I've created a character workflow where you put in a quick image, a small description, and out pops this masterful illustrative work. Secondly, we're going to go through a few bonuses. Uh, we're going to run through an, a more optimized way of using your face detailer, as well as a quick hack around Laura's, where to get them, and also how to figure out how to use them appropriately. So with all that being said, please feel free to share, like, subscribe, even jump on the Discord and we can chat and we're sharing workflows and images and a lot of cool stuff there too as well. So this is all about having fun and we're there to do it. Let's get to it. Okay, before we get into the caricature, just wanted to give you a quick update on our loader, which will be included in the links to the description. We now have uh, a slightly more optimized view. Uh, I've gotten rid of the extra set of samplers to make it a little bit more streamlined. And I've also upgraded Bodhi uh, to the latest versions, version four. Uh, I found that it's a little quicker and to use control net within the, uh, the Bodhi interface. Uh, basically to get there as always, you click the upscale uh, button over here and it'll enable it and then you can see in terms of the interface itself we have three different modules uh, for a more advanced look we can have a different video but basically you can even customize all the particular tiles uh, of the prompts if you wanted to but this is a, a very quick default view um, but otherwise it's pretty straightforward and then it kicks off into your preview bridge so with that being said let's work into our caricature model so as always, we wanna see what can Nicolas Cage get himself into? Uh, in this case, he's gonna be shoveling some manure. Uh, but essentially, here's our caricature workflow. And you can see, you'll basically load an image of a person's face, and then you're gonna write a quick uh, descriptor here. So in this case, I have a caricature of a 50-year-old person, small beard, write some basic descriptors. Uh, holding a shovel, close up, oversized head is important, so it kind of gives it that bulbous sort of look. Uh, you don't have to, right? You can play with this however you want. Um, some clothes, some background, etc. cetera. Um, I am using in the Mile High Styler the character that has a few extra prompts. It styles it a little bit better uh, to give it a, that, that more cartoony type look. And let me uh, go in here into my settings to uh, change up the spline so it's a little bit easier to see how things connect it's good feedback from you guys so i appreciate that as always and you can see um as we're going down this is going to go left to right by the way first we're starting with the sampler over here with the picture as you can see this doesn't even closely look like nicholas cage yet uh, but over time it will because what we're doing is we're going to be coupling together uh, IP adapter, face detailer, a little bit of reactor as well. And yet we're still going to retain that cartoony type look uh, to give it a really cool kind of polish at the end. So a few things here uh, that you'll want to run through. First, we're going to be uh, doing our normal sort of render here. Uh, we are looking to use a, a Laura called Caricature. Uh, it will be linked in the description. And additionally, from that render, we are then piping that into face detailer. So face detailer only looks at, of course, faces in this case. And the model that we're using is not the standard model that we're running on, which in this case is Halcyon uh, 1.7. It is the top 10 SDXL uh, model leader right now. And the um, if you click on the model here, you can see it's piping down from your IP adapter. So the IP adapter is bringing in the image of Nicolas Cage. And it's going to use that as a way to start to stylize the head, right, and the face. And so you can see the model weight is 1.0, so that's, you know, just a full model weight. You could increase this to about 1.4, 1.5. Anything above that, it gets a little warpy. Anything below that, you're really not gonna see the effect that you're looking for. We're connecting that with the Face ID connector. You can see for the face detailer, we're using, of course, our face model. So the parameters actually within the face detailer for this first run at it uh, is 
a 70% denoise, so it's changing it significantly. We're giving a lot of freedom to the AI to change things up. Uh, we're using our new sampler that we love, the IPNDM underscore V with Karas, uh, running about 20 steps. So that's all pretty straightforward. Um, I found also if you want to change their expression uh, in the image, uh, you can put that here. Uh, smiling, crying, happy, whatever that emotion is, it works really well. Um, and that's going to then lead into the next stage here. So if you see, right, it's looking a little bit like Nicolas Cage, but not really, right? We're not quite there yet. Um, we're going to get to him in a second. So from here, now we're going to jump into Reactor. So Reactor, if you haven't installed it before, you can find it in the Comfy Manager. And you're going to input that image of the farmer. The source image, of course, is Nicolas Cage. If I zoom out here, you can see, right, it's coming from Nick Cage here. And the face model and booster are new nodes that came out fairly recently for the Reactor node set. But essentially what you're doing is you're building additional sort of weight into the face to be able to apply it then to your main image. So in this case, you could see it's building a little face model by itself. I only have in this case, the one image of Nick Cage right over here. But if you wanted to make it robust, you could actually put in multiple images and then use your impact make batch to kind of collect them all together and pipe them into the image area here. So once you have your uh, face model uh, set up, I use face booster. It kind of gives it again a little bit more weight when it does it. You could see if I go up here, the images is really good, right? You have Nick Cage shoveling manure uh, at the farm. Uh, but if I zoom in a little bit, it's a little too photorealistic, right? It doesn't quite have that kind of illustrative look that the rest of the image has. Now, is that the end of the world? No. Like, this is actually a really funny picture, uh, and you can do this, you know, with any sort of picture. But I wanted to go just a little bit further. So I'm taking that, and I'm going into Bodhi, right? And so Bodhi's going to kind of refine it, you even upscale it as well if you want a much bigger image for print or whatever. And the parameters, as we kind of went through a second ago, are pretty much the same. I did use a different sampler here. I used the 3M with exponential. I also find even just using Euler, right, uh, with normal works very, very well. I would just keep the denoise down. Anything over 0.4, you start to see some more artifacts and some other things that you don't want from your original image. Um, so I really keep it low steps, five, 10 steps, low denoise, and that seems to do a pretty darn good job. Uh, additionally, the model that we're using is not, again, the, the straight model from Halcyon. We're actually piping in our caricature again. So we're, we're slowly influencing. Every time we're using the model in the face detailer or in, you know, in Bodhi here as a refiner, we're kind of influencing the model that's being used to uh, whatever we want. So in this case, we're using a Laura for cartoon caricatures, but you could do anything, right? You could use any Laura's. You could uh, do a lot of manipulations uh, to the model. You can use like an IP adapter or style adapter. Um, it really have a ton of flexibility. The key point is whatever you do to your model, make sure then to pipe it back into your model of where you're using it. So in this case, we're using it at the beginning of the upscaler for uh, McBody. So you can see the end result is fantastic. I'm really happy with this. Uh, Nick Cage is now shoveling manure. All right, we're going to jump to our second example here. Uh, this is now our bonus. So bonus one is about using face detail in a slightly different way. So in the example that I've provided, you know, I first started with a very basic render have a woman with her trophy at the Olympics. It's almost Olympics time. So I uh, have her very happy uh, over here. And if I zoom way out here, uh, you can see I have layered in some additional people. So in this case, I have uh, some other competitors. One's crying, a little bit fake looking. We're going to be working with that pretty soon. And as you know, we are layering. So we're going to layer that did a little bit of color matching and we're layering that and, and also I'm blurring it a little bit. And you'll see, I don't have to blur it, but I'm blurring it for the reason of uh, being able to show you how to optimize your face uh, detailer in a second here. Okay, so once we have that done, I'm gonna hit 
bookmark two to our kind of layer area of our workflow. And you could see I basically took and overlaid at a you know 60%. So I shrunk it and moved it a little bit to the right, a little bit down. And you can see I put them in the background, right? So we have our happy winner, and then we have the losers of the race here. And it's all good, right? It's pretty good in terms of the composition. Um, you can see that uh, it's nice that there's a little bit of blurriness. Obviously, it's not as far back as the stadium crowd, so it's not going to be that much blurred, right? It's just slightly blurred, and you can, of course, tailor and tweak it. Um, but I don't quite like the faces, right? I like this face a lot, uh, but I don't like the, their faces. I, so I want to face detail this. Now, as we did in the last example, we did a face, uh, we did a mask to segment, and then we brought that into the uh, segment detailer. And there's a lot of additional steps that we took to get that to work. Well, uh, thankfully, someone on the Discord channel had a really good suggestion, which was to use in face detailer something called the detailer hook. So here I'm using my regular old face detailer, but instead of bringing it to the segment detailer and doing all that segment stuff, instead, I am just using my detailer hook. And so in this case, I wanted to be able to do the smaller faces, but not the bigger faces. And as you can see here, right, I drag that down and into my segment order, as we did the last time, I have ascending and I'm doing four faces, right? Because we want to do our four smallest faces. Um, and you can see, obviously, in the stadium, there's no faces at all. It's too, too small. So they won't be picked up. And so if you can see in terms of the final result, I have a lot better in terms of my face detail quality. This is a very effective way of being able to quickly change some other faces in the background without having to build all that extra node work around the masking and segment detail stuff. Um, and then of course, finally, I did add a crying uh, expression here to kind of round it out. So it's a very cool trick to help you uh, quickly detail those small faces. Next, so let's talk about Loras. So as you know, you can jump to many different sorts of websites to get Loras. Civitai is a really good one. There's a new one called Shacker that just started, and you have Tensor and a whole bunch of other sorts of sites that you could download Loras. Now, the nice thing is, right, here in the uh, particular page, once you've downloaded your Lora, you have kind of the details around when it was published, etc., and you have these trigger words uh, of what to use to really kind of get that emphasis to get that detail out into your particular works. Now, the challenge, of course, is you don't want to have to come to Civitai every single time you want to use one of your existing Loras to figure out what are those trigger words to use or what were the words that it was trained on to be able to kind of really bring out that effect. Thankfully, there is a new node called Lora Auto Trigger. And so when you bring this in, it's a custom node. You basically bring the node in and then you uh, select the Laura that you want to use. And then there's two ways you can go. One is the Civitai tag list, right? The list that we just saw a second ago around freckles. So if you bring that into the tag formatter and then out to a string, and this string, by the way, if you haven't used this before, this show text by Python Goss, it's always great for debugging. So I definitely recommend using that if you haven't done that before. Um, but this is the easiest way, right? So you basically bring this in, and most of the time it will automatically default to using what you have locally. And if you don't have it, it will search Civitai and then bring back those Lora tags. Um, and then of course, if you wanted to force it every single time to go to Civitai, let's say the Lora changes often, you can uh, enable that option as well. But I keep it off because once you get it the first time, most likely it's not gonna change until you download a new version. Same thing goes for those tags around training. So you can see I have a whole bunch of training tags that were trained into that LoRa, so that will help you as well. So you can quickly understand what are those keywords that are gonna be used to really bring out that effect. And you can also obviously incorporate those uh, training tags as well. Now, sometimes uh, a LoRa won't have uh, particular trigger words uh, and that's fine, right? Sometimes it'll just work. You don't have to do anything special. Uh, the show text will just be blank. So if you see blank when you run this, uh, it will basically mean that there's no special tags to be able to use that LoRa. Uh, and you can just simply you know, use the LoRa as is and increase the weight um, to the amount of uh, effect that you're trying to get. So that's really cool. 
Um, and then, of course, you know, the question comes, well, I love, you know, being able to go see all the images, but sometimes I just want to quickly have a reference sheet to be able to understand what LORAs are out there for SDXL. So on the top 10 SDXL uh, list, we have a whole bunch of LORAs in our LORA style tab of the sheet where you can have different textures, different image styles, architecture, poses, expressions, and just some miscellaneous cool things like lighting and you know, things around face detail, etc. So, you know, you could say, well, oh, I want to have uh, one of my subjects be uh, detailed in crystals. We have crystals here. You can click on it and it'll immediately bring you to the right Laura. So you don't have to search and hunt and pack. You don't have to worry about NSFW stuff, right? It just brings you right there to download and then you can start using that Laura right away. Same thing for image style, right? Let's say you're like, ah, you know what? I really want um, this to be kind of like a 1980s sort of montage type feel, you can just click on that LoRa, brings you right to that particular LoRa to use, download, and then you can start using it right away. And same thing for angles and all the other things. So uh, hopefully that's a helpful reference uh, for you as well. So as always, thank you so much for jumping on here. I really, really appreciate it. Please, as always, feel free to share, like, subscribe, and help us spread the word. Also, again, feel free to jump on the Discord. We do a lot of chat uh, around different image techniques uh, and new things coming out. And there's a lot of people that help each other in the community, which is really awesome. So with that being said, we'll see you next time.